Good morning, students. I'm Padmini Arka, teacher from Chamber Nagda MPA School. And today we are going to cover a very important topic in your English written paper. And that is question number six. If you have gone through the format of your question paper for English 80 marks written paper, question number six A and question number six B, we have information transfer, okay? So question number six A1, we have non-verbal to verbal or verbal to non-verbal. So what does this mean? Verbal to non-verbal and non-verbal to verbal. Let's find out. Now in information transfer, verbal to non-verbal, what you can do is you will be given a paragraph in which the title is compulsory. Okay, then find important points from the paragraph to convert into. Either you will have to convert it into a tree diagram, a graph or a pie chart. Either you have to uh, convert that paragraph into table form, a flow chart or do's and don'ts. Okay, so these are the topics that you get in uh, transforming the information from verbal to non-verbal, okay? So let's uh, uh, see some of them. Now see, if it is a table chart, like if the paragraph has to be uh, converted into a table chart, you will have to draw the table and whatever information the uh, paragraph contains, you need to transfer it in the table form. Either you'll get uh, to transfer it into a tree diagram or flow chart. So this is how it will look. Now the marking scheme, as I told you, it is very important and you can actually score full marks in this, okay? So how do we score full marks? So first thing is the title. If you write the title properly as per the paragraph, first thing is you have to read the paragraph. You have to see uh, what does it contain. And accordingly, you have to suggest a suitable title. You have to write that title, okay? So that will contain one mark. Next is, if you cover all the points, you get two marks. So already we have three marks in our hand out of the five marks. Then appropriate layout. Layout, as I told you earlier, like if they have asked you the table chart or the tree diagram, the flow chart. So you have to select the appropriate layout. Okay, so this is the layout. So for that, that carries one mark. And overall presentation, that is your grammar, your pro, your spellings and all these things and your overall presentation, like how you have prepared, like uh, you don't have to uh, do a lot of scribbling work and all, the neatness, all this overall will give you one mark. So total five marks. Okay, I hope you understood this. Let's continue. Now, I've taken you an example. I'll read it. Uh, please pay attention, everyone. I hope my screen is visible to you. Now, the question is, Read the following information and present it in the tree diagram given below. Give a suitable title. Okay, so now what they have asked you is, you have to prepare a tree diagram. I will read this passage. Okay, even you all concentrate on this. And then we are going to prepare a tree diagram. I'll show you how, if you, if you get a question like this in your question paper, in your ninth standard final exam, your 80 marks paper, how you will answer this question to score full five marks, okay? Now, the I'll read the passage. Please pay attention. Rocks are not all the same. The three main types or classes of rocks, they are sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Sedimentary rocks are formed from particles of sand, shells, pebbles, and other fragments of material. Generally, sedimentary rock is fairly soft and may break apart or crumble easily. It is usually the only type that contains fossils. Examples of this rock type include conglomerate and limestone. 
Now this information was given regarding one type of rock. Now let's see the next one. Metamorphic rocks are formed under the surface of the earth from the change that occurs due to intense heat and pressure. The rocks that result from these processes often have ribbon-like layers and may have shiny crystals formed by minerals growing slowly over time on their surface. Examples of this type include gneiss and marble. This was the second type. Now the next one. Igneous rocks are formed when magma cools and hardens. You know, know how the volcano erupts and the uh, magma, it comes out. So when this magma comes out and it cools and hardens, sometimes the magma cools inside the earth and other times it erupts into the surface from volcanoes. When lava cools very quickly, no crystals form and the rocks look shiny and glass-like. Sometimes gas bubbles are trapped in the rock during the cooling process leaving tiny holes and spaces in the rocks. Examples of this type include basalt and obsidian. Okay, so this is the paragraph that has been given. And what have they asked us? They have told us to present it in a tree diagram. Okay, and remember students, one mark you get for title. So please don't forget to write the title because five marks question and this one mark for title is very important. So when you go through the paragraph the first thing that you will write is the title okay so let's continue now see here this is the format okay title as i told you this will uh, give you one mark so types of rocks is the title now because they have told us to prepare tree diagram you have to first mention the types of rock Now in types, you have three types, sedimentary, metamorphic, igneous. Now from where did we get this information? We have this information in the paragraph itself. So for this, we need to read the paragraph clearly, okay? So the spellings also are there in the paragraph. So you don't have to by heart anything. You just have to open your eyes wide and see the paragraph, read it carefully and you will get all the information. Here, you don't have to buy heart anything. Just read the passage and you will get all the information, okay? So the types of rocks that were mentioned here was sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Now, below sedimentary, formed from. How it is formed? So because we read the paragraph clearly, we came to know that sedimentary rocks are formed from particles of sand, shells, pebbles, and other fragments of material. Now, from where did we get this information? In the paragraph itself. We don't have to write anything of our own. Whatever is given in the paragraph, you just have to write it in a tree diagram. Okay. Next one, metamorphic rom, uh, rock. How is it formed? Formed under the surface of the earth from the change that occurs due to intense heat and pressure. And how is igneous rock formed? Formed when magma cools and hardens. All this information, students, is given in the passage. You need to read it clearly. You need to understand where you have to write what, and accordingly, you have to prepare the tree diagram. Okay? Now, the examples that have been given in the passage, examples un under the sedimentary rock is conglomerate and limestone. Examples under metamorphic are and marble. And under igneous rock is basalt and obsidian okay so this was the tree diagram according to the passage we have prepared this tree diagram okay i hope it is really clear and if you get this type of question it will really be easy for you to answer and you can score full five marks and five marks is really very important now next question you have a choice in this question number six either you have to transfer Verbal to non-verbal or it is non-verbal to verbal. So it is the opposite of what we did in right now. Okay. Now here they have given you a table diagram or they will give you a tree diagram or they can give you a pie chart. Okay. 
and you need to transfer this information into verbal form that means you have to write a passage on that the rules are same over here okay as i told you title will uh, give you one mark okay the marking scheme is same only thing instead of write you writing uh, like you reading a passage and uh, transforming it into a non verbal thing here you have you have been given the pass, uh, table and you have to transfer it into a passage okay so now you see you have visited a tourist place you liked it very much use the points given in the table and write a paragraph like the before question we did that was you had to prepare a tree diagram here they have given you a table and you have to write a paragraph on that okay it even this is easy but if you want to score full five marks first thing is you should know what you are writing here you can you know commit some mistakes like spelling mistakes or some grammatical mix, mistakes can happen but in the before question where it was transfer from verbal to non verbal in that you have to just read the paragraph and you need to transfer it as per the information that they have given okay so now let's see what is given in the table they have given you points and they have given you information okay even this is five marks you have a choice between non verbal to verbal and verbal to non verbal it is your choice any one you have to do please don't go to attempt both the questions okay it is a choice between verbal to non verbal and non verbal to verbal it is up to you what you feel is easy to uh, score full five marks okay now the points that have been given you is place information given is kolhapur how to how to get there by bus train where to stay dharamshala and hotels place of tourist interest is rajwada ranka lake mahalakshmi temple other places close by is panhala jyotiba things to buy you have chapels and ornaments uh, you all know that kolhapuri chapels are very famous and best months to visit like when when are the best time when is the best time that you can visit is november and december so this is the information that they have given you this is in a uh, table form and you have to write it in a paragraph okay so let's see how to write that now as i told you title is important so here the title given is tourist place kolhapur so here students you can write any suitable title which suits that table the information that has been given to you okay what i have written right now is tourist place kolhapur this is the title that i have written so that i can get one mark then then it is the passage kolhapur in is in maharashtra it is one of the tourist uh, centers in maharashtra it is very famous for the mahalakshmi temple we can go there by bus or train we can stay in dharamshala or hotels tourists visit rajwada ranka lake mahalakshmi temple panhala and jyotiba are other close by places now see here all this information i have got it from that table that has been given okay i don't have to buy hat anything i don't need very uh, you know some uh, great knowledge to write this passage because everything has been given in that table which has been given in the question okay now let's continue there are some famous articles to buy like uh, this also has been given in the table they are chapels and ornaments best months to visit this tourist place are november and december many people visit this place as holy place because of mahalakshmi temple it has got historical importance panhala and jyotiba are at the top of the mountain many people visit jyotiba temple on foot it is one of the best market places also kolhapuri chapels are very famous in maharashtra now see here if you see there are few lines which have been added on your own okay so, so if you want you can also increase the content but please be careful don't make any spelling mistakes and please don't uh, make any grammatical mistakes also okay where you can lose marks but other all the information is been given in the table so now let's move to question number 6b it is 
crafting a speech or view counter view now again students you have a choice between either you have to draft or write a speech or you have to select view counter view okay so now let's uh, see about speech writing or how to draft a speech now according to you what is a speech what do you mean by speech it is a speech is expressing one's ideas on a certain topic orally or verbally okay so what do you mean by speech like if anyone tells you that uh, you have to speak a few words on this topic okay you have to address to the audience so that means you are uh, expressing your own views your own ideas about that topic okay so how do we draft it now the marking scheme for speech writing is appropriate beginning and conclusion you get one mark using of given points addition of new points and appropriate use of language will give you two marks proper sequence of thoughts and flow of language like if you you are giving a speech or you are writing a speech the topic that has been given to you the flow you know like the the way you are expressing your views it should be in a proper flow so that will give you one mark and use of appropriate grammatical structure that will give you one mark so total five marks away okay so this is also very important even here you can score full five marks if you are using all this proper sequence as per the marking uh, scheme okay so let's see the drafting a speech some guidelines speech is written to express views on a specific topic in public okay speech you are not going to give uh, in a closed room you are going to uh, address to public to a number of people who are going to uh, you know uh, find out what your views are there about that topic when you express them next is present tense is usually used while writing a speech so students remember that you are in front of the audience okay so the speech that you will be writing it should be in present tense speech is divided into three paragraphs okay now when you are giving a speech or when you are writing a speech you have to divide it into three paragraphs so what are the three paragraphs first is the introduction because you are going to address to the audience so the audience should know who you are so this should be short this is the first paragraph next is the main body the topic that has been given to you on what you are going to express your views that is your paragraph number 2 and ending the third one is your conclusion so that is paragraph 3 and even this should be short so only the main body that is the paragraph number 2 it will have the it will have all the contents of the topic okay so as i told you it is in three paragraph first is the introduction second is the main body and last is the conclusion okay so i hope uh, you find you're finding it easier now so that when you will write your english paper next month you will be having your final exams this will really be easy for you when you select this topic okay now drafting a speech introduction what can you say in introduction first thing is you have the first thing what you will do is greet the audience then you have to introduce yourself and then introduce the topic like on what you are going to express your views okay so this is very important because when you are going to address to the audience the audience uh, may not know you you know so you need to first uh, you have to greet the audience then you have to introduce yourself and then you have to introduce the topic on what you are going to give the speech so for example in introduction if you are giving the speech in school your audience obviously they will be the uh, teachers the principal and of course your uh, friends that are that are the students okay so when you are uh, giving your introduction how you will start is respected principal teachers and my dear friends i am rahul why they or your name you have to uh, give your name i am uh, so and so studying in class you have to mention your class i am delighted to have this golden opportunity of expressing my views on and here you have to give the name of the topic okay you know this is a very important subject to all of us now this is up to you how you give your introduction okay but depending on the audience 
you are in uh, what type of audience whether you are in school or whether you are in some uh, you know you are in some occasion or you are celebrating some uh, national day the event is important and accordingly you have to uh, start your introduction okay let's move on now second is body of the speech now this is the main topic the topic that has been given to you on which you are going to give the speech so first thing is you have to define the topic then you have to mention the reasons causes and effects then you can give some relevant examples and then you can uh, ask questions to the public itself you know where the answers you don't expect any answers from the public okay from the people who are listening to you explain your topic in detail and this body of the speech it should be in around 80 to 100 words okay because this is the main body of the speech okay now last is the concluding that is the ending conclude the topic in one or two lines first thing you need to thank the audience because they were good listeners they have uh, you know listened patiently to you they have heard what your views are about that topic okay and then thank you everyone for being patient listeners or whatever you want to uh, end uh, this uh, speech in and uh, that would be the ending of your speech the concluding part okay i hope you have understood i've told you how you have to uh, draft the speech i've also informed you how what is the marking scheme total 5 marks the beginning okay appropriate beginning should be there it gives you one mark the main body of the letter the points that you add in your speech okay the appropriate language used over here that gives you two marks proper sequence of thoughts and flow of language that is one mark and use of appropriate grammatical structure one mark okay so total five marks now let's take one example for speech now this is one example you are going to participate in an inter inter school elocution competition arranged by your school write a speech on books are our real friends with the help of the following points now students please uh, see that the topic is more important okay on what topic you are going to speak now the occasion can be different now maybe uh, like how we had the republic day uh, recently we celebrated republic day but in that what was the topic of your speech okay so that is also important so you need to read the question really very thoroughly okay now here there is an inter school competition and the topic that has been given to you to speak is books are our real friends okay and they have given you some points so that uh, you can it will be helpful for you while delivering the speech you need to mention that books are your real friends they are the treasures of knowledge personality development increasing uh, delivery uh, delivering speech ability and confidence and leadership so these are the points that should be included when you are giving a speech or when you are writing a speech okay so remember that topic is more important the occasion is not what you have to mention in the speech yes of course when you are giving the speech you can uh, give the importance of the occasion also but your the, your main concentration should be on the topic of the speech okay now as i told you the topic you have to write books are our real friends now this is now your beginning of the speech as i told you introduction so honorable chairperson respected headmaster teachers and my dear friends i am you have to mention your name studying in standard you have to mention your standard 9th or 10th whatever it is today i am going to speak about books are our real friends so in your introduction you have to address to the audience you have to greet them in the beginning okay so your greeting should be like on the audience who are the, they in front of you and accordingly you need to greet them then you have to introduce yourself who you are because the audience doesn't know you or, or even if they know you 
all of them the hundred percent audience would be knowing. Okay. Now, of course, your school friends who are there in the audience, they will recognize you. But, but what about the other people who are at uh, there in this program? Okay. So that's the reason you need to tell your name and you are in which class because now this is uh, this you are giving in uh, school. So you have to mention your class. Okay. And of course, as I told you, the topic of the of your speech on which you are going to express your views should be introduced in the beginning. Okay. Now, as they have given some points for you to uh, speak on, so now let's begin that. We know that there are many friends, but real friends are very few. Do you know books are our real friends? See, as I told you, you need to ask questions. But here you are not expecting any answer. It is like rhetorical type questions. Okay, you are just ask, telling them like that, simply because. books guide us like the pole star they are better than human friends human friends may be selfish but the books are selfless they are treasures of knowledge they are helpful in developing our personality they inspire us to do great things in life i hope my screen is visible to you all teacher my screen is visible okay i'll continue books increase our delivering speech ability they also increase our confidence they provide us information about the historical events they guide all the readers in the same way books develop leadership qualities books make us knowledgeable they give us a lot of information and entertain us okay now from where do we get all this information we have the points which have been given see here in the beginning they have given you some points that is real friends treasures of knowledge personality development increase delivering speech ability and confidence and leadership so all these points we have just elaborated that okay and we have given this speech okay so these points really help us in writing a proper speech friends it is rightly said that a friend in need is a friend indeed true friend shares not only our happiness but our sorrow also he stands by us in sun and sh in shower in this sense i say that books are our real friends okay now here the ending you can also mention over here thank you for being patient listeners okay or thank you for listening to me patiently and then you can thank the audience and your thank you it should be on the left hand side not right hand side here it is written on the right hand side but now students you have to write everything it should be in left indent form okay so you have to write it in the left hand side so this was an example of speech now next is question number 6 b2 view and counter view okay so what is view and what is counter view when you are writing in favor of the given topic that is view and when you are writing against the given topic that is the counter view so question you have to, the so students you have to read the question properly whether in the question they have asked you view or counter as i told you you have to select any one of the topic from speech writing or view counter okay so before selecting the topic you have to see you have to read the question see which is in which you are comfortable you are comfortable in writing and accordingly you select the topic okay because students this question is for 5 marks and once you start writing then you cannot change the topic okay so before selecting the question you need to read the points you need to decide to yourself which uh, topic you are comfortable in writing and then start writing okay and again in view and counter view if they have given you view then that means you have to write in favor of the topic and if you select counter view that means you have to write in you have to write against the topic okay against the given topic please remember that students we know every coin have two sides heads and tails 
Similarly, many social, political, educational, and economic issues have different perspectives that are opposite. Like whatever topic uh, which are which are given in the question for writing about view and counter view, like in every uh, in every topic there is a view and a counter view also. It is in favor and it is in against the topic also. Okay, like a coin has heads and tails. Every uh, political or social uh, issue has two types. It is uh, okay. Either it will be as per the views or the counter that will be in favor or it will be in against the topic. Okay, so now let's see. Now these are the rules when you are writing view or counter. Rule number one says that understand the topic properly, read the question twice, think about different perspectives. Second one is present your ideas logically. That is the flow of sequence. You know over here also is important. Next is choose the appropriate vocabulary. Write points in paragraph format in approximate 110 to 120 words or 18 to 20 lines. When you're writing, do not be aggressive. Like sometimes what happens is when you're writing against the topic, you are sometimes aggressive. The next is add an appropriate title specify if the passage is a view or a counter view okay now let's take an example prepare a paragraph with an appropriate title to be used for the counter view section on the following topic study says homework does not help students score better grades now see the question is that you have to be, you are going to write counter view section. Okay, that means you have to write against that topic. Okay, see, I'll read the question again. Prepare a paragraph with an appropriate title to be used for the counter view section on the following topic. Okay, so you have to write against. You are not in favor of homework. So you have to write against. Okay, study says homework does not help students score better grades. Okay, so now let's see the topic. Homework causes stress for students as well as parents. Now, before you start writing this uh, counter view, first thing what you have to write is the title, you know, that the topic which has been given. So before starting, you have to write homework should be banned. Or you can write study says homework does not help students score better grades. So that is your topic. You have to mention whether you're writing view or you're writing the counter view. Now, as in the question, they have mentioned that you have to write the counter view so you have to write counter view, homework should be banned. So we are uh, writing the counter view right now. So homework causes stress for students as well as parents. It is extremely demanding and many students are spending endless hours after school to complete their assignments. Consequently, Family time is put on the back burner due to time constraints of homework. Now, what happens is when students are busy, first thing is they go to school for so many hours, then they come back home, then they have to do their homework. So obviously family time is put at stake. They don't get any family time. They don't get time to, uh, you know, they don't have any time to spend with their parents, their grandparents, the people who are at home, okay? Additionally, any extracurricular activities are also put on hold. Now, what happens is, when there is homework, the extra the extracurricular activities like you know parents uh, have put them in some extracurricular activities like uh, some dance classes or music classes or drawing classes or you know nowadays uh, yoga uh, yoga is also uh, going on. So what happens is when homework is there, then students are busy doing their homework and they don't have time for any other extracurricular activities. So obviously the extracurricular activities are at stake. That day it is a holiday for that extracurricular. Activity. It should be banned because the negative effects overweigh, sorry, outweigh the benefits that come from homework. So what happens is because of homework, students don't give attention to any other work. Students struggle with homework for various reasons, some of which are because they do not understand the assigned homework or they are not being uh, challenged. Now what happens sometimes homework is very rhetorical. 
they feel uh, students feel bored writing the same things again and again or sometimes what happens is students don't understand at all what teacher wants uh, from that student uh, for doing that homework okay they don't understand the topic they don't understand what teacher has given homework and then you know they involve their parents their elders who, whoever will be helping them okay so again that is a uh, very uh, wrong over here so students struggle with homework for various reasons some of which are uh, because they do not understand assign the assigned homework or they are not being challenged overall homework is a waste of time eliminating homework allows students to reward of free time and the invaluable time spent with family okay now what happens is if there is no homework students will get time to spend with their friends to spend it with their family members okay and they can even spend their time doing some other extracurricular activities but if they have homework they don't have all these you know they cannot do all these uh, other extracurricular activities so homework should be banned okay so this was the topic that uh, we had started with so these were the reasons that we have mentioned why homework should be banned okay so we have finished with question number 6 of your english paper 80 marks written paper okay uh, what what we have covered is we have covered uh, the counter view okay that is question number 6 we have the question of view and counter view it depends on the question whether the question has been asked for view or counter view so please read the question clearly read the passage clearly okay i have helped you out with some of the rules that should be uh, uh, keep in, in mind while you are selecting this uh, question that is either view or counter view okay next is uh, we have covered the speech writing i have helped you out uh, how to draft a speech okay i have given you the marking scheme for speech writing okay and how you are going to start the introduction the main body and conclusion we have also covered today verbal to non verbal and non verbal to verbal that is information transfer so today we have finished with question number 6 of your written paper okay uh, i'll just go through the rules once more as we have time today now as we as i've told you the marking scheme for uh, information transfer verbal to non verbal okay in which either uh, they will ask you to give it in a, convert it into a tree diagram or a graph or a pie chart or tables or you can uh, write a flow chart or you can it may, it may be asked as do's or don'ts okay as i've already told you all the marking scheme the title is important which will give you one mark then covering all points appropriate layout overall presentation so total 5 marks in which one mark is for the title covering all points gives you two marks appropriate layout or the graph uh, you know the grammar that you are writing and the spellings this will give you one mark and overall presentation one mark uh, this is very easy you can score full 5 out of 5 over here okay we have already covered one example of uh, the uh, tree diagram next one which we covered was non verbal to verbal in which a paragraph uh, table was given and you had to convert it into a paragraph okay so you have to read that table properly and again here the title was important in which uh, you will get one mark main uh, the paragraph that you write you you have to cover all the points that are uh, given in the table okay so we have done this also then we started with speech writing in which i have told you how to uh, start writing a speech the marking uh, scheme for speech was appropriate beginning conclusion gives you one mark use of given points addition of new points and appropriate use of language gives you two marks proper sequence of thoughts and flow of language gives you one mark and use of appropriate grammatical structure one mark so here again you have five marks okay now here again you are you have an option either you have to select speech writing or you have the topic view counter view okay so again in view and counter view first thing is you need to read the question properly whether the question is for reading the view or the counter view okay and if they have asked you view that means you have to speak in you have to write in favor of the topic and if you have selected the question counter view then you have to write against the topic okay 
and when you are writing the following points that have to be that you have to pay attention is understand the topic properly read the question twice think about different perspective like what what things that you can write for this uh, topic then present your ideas logically then choose the appropriate vocabulary write points in paragraph format in approximate 110 to 120 words or i either 18 to 20 lines do not be aggressive when you are writing whether you are writing in favor or whether you are writing against the topic please do not be aggressive in writing add an appropriate title specify if the passage is a view or a counter view that is also important whenever you start writing you have to read the question and see what has been asked whether they have asked you view or they have asked you counter view and when you begin writing this question you have to mention in the beginning whether you are writing the view or the counter view okay but if they have specifically asked you to write view or they have asked you to write uh, counter view so you have to write that only you cannot choose your own topic only okay but if it is not mentioned you have to mention whether you are writing view or counter view okay i hope you all have understood these topics uh, which was very important where uh, this question number 6 total 10 marks 5 marks for uh, verbal to non verbal and non verbal to verbal and uh, the other 5 marks for either speech writing or view counter view okay so this we have today we have covered 10 marks uh, thank you very much if you have any doubts you can ask me students do you have any doubt right now